house did you grow up? Uh, well, the house we lived in was in Bank Place, yeah. uh, just off the main street. And we lived in a three-storey house. And my father was a butcher, and his father before him was a butcher, oh, right. and his father before him was a butcher. <laughs> so we were butchered back for a long way. Yeah. Anyway, uh, there, was, um, there was a big family was there. There was ten in the family. I was the eldest, and uh, the others um, uh, were steps and stairs. So we had five boys and five girls. We had the house we had there, the shop and house overhead it had four, three bed, three bedrooms. And I'd say there was nine, there was ten of us there. There was my father and mother, of course, and we had an aunt that was living with us. Uh, she, used, she acted as a nanny. You know what a nanny is? I do. And then we had an uncle who uh, had an accident and uh, he came to live with us as well. And he, um, he, he, he was a very handy man around the house. And I don't know where we all slept. <laughs> I don't really because I, there, was, there, were in, there were only three beds, you know. Mm -hmm. So I mean, someone was, must have slept and I don't remember. I don't remember where we slept, except we all went to bed at night and, and slept, <laughs> and, um, but we, we, we had a great time. What, what? Oh, that's, how did your area get its name? Oh, right, yeah, well, the Bank of Ireland, the original name for the street was Main Street. The Main Street went down as far as the Banter Road corner. Yep. And uh, when the Bank of Ireland built their premises, the, you know the Bank of Ireland that was on the Main Street, yeah. uh, Bank there? Uh, that's how the street got its name Bank Place, which was formerly part of the main street. So that's how the name... And can I ask you about Goat's Lane here? How did, you, how did that get its name? First of all, Goat's Lane. Uh, it's the oldest... Goat's Lane and the Old Road are the two oldest streets in Tipperary Town. Yeah. And they were built before the famine. So they were only built as, we'd call it, um, temporary houses. And they were built uh, with mud and stones. There was no cement. There was no Termic. Uh, anything in the line of um, building materials at that time. But we're talking about a long time ago now. And um, the goat sand was the original main road from Tipperary to, we'll say, Banch and yeah. Salmel. Yeah. Something like 70 houses built on it. Well. So Wall was right, <laughs> and it was the same on the old road. Now that's before the main streets and any of the other, other, other big streets were built. And uh, there was people in each of the houses that had no money. So after the famine everybody was broke and they were all... And they all had little, their own private uh, occupations or industries, or whatever they like to call it. Uh, there were tailors, there was, there was one of the houses uh, what had, was a smith living there. And he yes. used to chew horses. Yes. And he used to make the uh, the shoes inside in the kitchen of the house that they were living in and shoe the horses outside the door. They didn't have any money. There was a lot of kind of bartering going on. I make a suit of clothes for you and you give me something else instead the next day. Mm. That kind of thing was going on. Neighbours, there was no, no doors were closed. Every door in the, in the street was, and everybody used to went everywhere else as houses. But in our days, the schools are harder to go to now. The yeah. teachers now are dead soft. <laughs> they're, dead soft. They're, they're not, they're not, they're not drumming it into the lads at all. They're talking nicely to them and saying, do this and do that. We got none of that. We got belted like it. Was. <laughs> the Christian brothers had all of the leather about that length. You know what a leather yeah, strap yeah, is? Yeah. Have you seen one? Yeah. They're old fashioned now. Are they using them still? No, no. <laughs> oh, I'm glad to hear that now because they, were, they could do deadly damage. But, uh, and the, but classes were very big. We had 44 in our class. Many in your class. 23. See what I mean? Yeah. So the teachers had a lot tougher time then than they have yeah. now. Uh, so, um, and if, if you want to know about going to school, when I was, I went to, I, I went to school when I was four years of age. And the first school I went to was the convent. And I think there's a few stories there. That's where we went to school. And when I was 14 then, I left school. I didn't like school because they were, t they were teaching us Greek and Latin. Yeah. And I was going to be a butcher. What do you want Greek and Latin for a good butcher? That's a fact now, you yeah, know. Yeah. But anyway, I left school because my father, 
My, no, my mother didn't want me to leave school because there was nine more after me to be cared for. But my father and he said, "Well, look, if he if he wants to if he wants to be a butcher, or he wants to come into the shop. There'll be plenty of work for him." So I went down butcher. Now you asked me what kind of work did I do? Yeah, jobs around the house. I was cleaning out the whole time. In the butcher shop, there's a lot of cleaning out to be done. And at the back of the butcher shop, we had our abattoir. You know what an abattoir is? Yeah. We used to call it a slaughterhouse. I know it's a lot more vulgar word, but that was the name of it. And we used to do all our killing out there. That would be the cattle and the sheep and all the rest of it. But it's only cattle and sheep. And uh, then we, we'd hang them up out there. We'd cut them out and bring them into the shop then to sell them. But we had... Um, we had... Uh, a couple of men working for us, they'd be butchers, and uh, they wouldn't do any cleaning up after them. So you asked me what I was doing. I used to be cleaning up after the butchers, and that meant blood, and goats, and stuff, and often, all that kind of thing, you know. So that's what I started doing, was the cleaning up part of it, you know. But then eventually, um, they let me do some of the, I used to, they, they wouldn't let you touch the meat when you be young, because you'd have to be, trained and at that time there was a thing called serving your time you had to serve your time to any trade you were in but the, the time that uh, i was um doing it it was very rough and ready yeah. you know we'd no white coats and we'd no striped suits and we'd no fancy hats on our heads like the butcher has now but eventually anyway they'd leave you do things like um skin in the sheep's head you learn how to skin, how to skin an animal by learning how to skin a head without cutting the skin. Now that sounds kind of funny, but that, that was the kind of training you got. And um, so that, that's kind of, well, then I got used to cutting meat and used to killing and used to all the other things. You, you kind of came up along the ladder then until you were in the shop and selling the meat yeah. and taking in the money. Yeah. <laughs> and. Um, so that's, that's the kind of work I was doing. I suppose it just continued after that. Yeah. When I finished butchering, I was still doing the same thing. <laughs> oh, all the country lads, <clears throat> they used to walk into school. Yeah. And they could be walking from Bancha. Do you know how far Bancha is? Yeah. Imagine walking from Bancha to school every morning. Yeah. But that's what they, they used to do there. And a lot of them used to come in on their bare feet, not because they didn't have boots, but because that's the way they used to walk around. People often think because they see people in bare feet that they had nothing, you know. But all the farmers, sons and daughters, they all walked around. I have four children and they're going around their bare feet the whole time, even now. Even yeah. So, you know, it was healthy to go around your bare feet. But most people think now, they see some of their bare feet that, oh, the poor foot, barefoot children, like, you know, it doesn't work like that, no? Did you get any sweets or... Sweets, we eat? did. My father used to give us a penny. And there was a shop at the corner of Bank Place called the Rendezvous. Now that's not probably the right name, but we just called it the Rendezvous. Now I'd say it could be a translation for the Rendezvous, which is a French word for a kind of a meeting place, but I don't. We just called it the Rendezvous on it. And they used to sell sweets, and they were the best bargain. You get 16 sweets for a penny. Mm. Many sweets would you get for a penny now? No. <laughs> what? You were never with your own. <laughs> But and then there was there was things like um, <coughs> um, I can't remember. Bull's eyes now were a favour. Yeah. Uh, mints were a favour. Uh, what would be the other sweets now? Peggy's leg. You ever hear of Peggy's leg? No, don't think so. No. Uh, you, you go to the shop sometime and buy a Peggy's leg and see what it's like. And there lots of there lots of funny names, you know. And then there was money balls. You ever hear of money balls? Mm -hmm. When the money ball was a small little thing, a sweet, big sweet like that, with money in the middle of it. But there was only money in every 40, one in every 40. Mm -hmm. And you were buying this money ball, you had to buy 39 of them before you get, <laughs> before you get the more the money in it. What, games did, you play? what games did you play at school? <clears throat> at school? Well, I wasn't very much good at games now, to be honest with you. But the, the schools, uh, the Christian brothers we had in schools were very Irish. And they were very much into Irish games. So the big thing was hurling and Gaelic football. They were the two big things. You couldn't play rugby, you couldn't play soccer, you couldn't play any of those other games where if you play them, you'd be banned from playing uh, the Gaelic football. 
you wouldn't be allowed to play the two games. So if you were playing an English game, and anyway, you wouldn't because you get killed if you were caught playing the English games anyway. But uh, the game, the big game in the, in the monastery was football. And then um, hurling would be, you see, hurling, you had to, to buy a hurley to play hurling. Yeah. And people, there was no money. You didn't have money in those days, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Do you have money in your pocket now? Not much. <laughs> no money either. Oh well, <laughs> but you, we used to be like that all the time. We used to be like that all the time. So, um, so they are the games, and uh, then uh, every so often we'd be we'd be taken on a kind of a, an outing, and the outing would be to climb Gatty Moor. It wouldn't be to go to the seaside, right? You know, or go up the Glen, or go up to a farm or something like that. You know, the church was there. The church that's there now was there then, and we went to mass. We went to mass on Sundays. Now, there was a special Mass for school children. Half nine Mass every Sunday was for school. And we had, um, the, the Christian brothers used to attend the Masses. And you had to go into your own section there. And there was a choir. And the, the choirs were, were, were the school choirs. They had the, the convent school choir and the monastery school choir and different choirs, but they were, they were all children. And but going into mass, I can remember well. There was three sections. There was the man's side, the men's side, the women's side, and the middle. And the middle side, I don't know where it came from, but the tradition was that when you go in the front door, you buy a ticket. You pay two pence for a ticket. You get a ticket, and you go in into the church, and you know where the the spaces between the two lots of seats and, yeah. in the middle. You go in there anyway, and there was a man there standing collecting your ticket. So you had the ticket to go into the centre. So that must have been for the rich people or something. Mm -hmm. But uh, that, was, that was the tradition. Uh, masses were long. Some of the priests were very boring. Uh, you think the priests are boring now, but some of the priests would spend an hour giving a lecture uh, at that time. Now, there, there's always good priests, and yeah. they, they didn't know any better. They thought they were doing a wonderful thing, preaching the gospel and that, you know. Yeah. But if you weren't, if you weren't at that children's mass, the following day, the Christian brother would, would put you standing out at the, at the side of the class because you, you had missed, uh, missed the, you hadn't been at the second mass. Or else you'd have to have a, a, you'd have a little note from your mother or father saying, that you were sick or you couldn't go or there was something wrong. If you had the note, you didn't get put out. But if you, hadn't, if you didn't have the note, you were put out to the sideline, as they call it. Sideline. I, I, I was sent out there on that. I remember in the butcher shop, I remember all the poor people coming in. And most of them had, had a book, small pack books, like that, about that size. And when they buy the meat, they give you the pass book. And you write down on the pass book much to meat is. You know, pound of steak, twopence. Or they wouldn't be buying, no one was buying steak. It was all violent meat in, in, in those times because they couldn't afford, they couldn't afford the, the, um, the, the, to pay for the meat. And most of them would be buying the cheaper parts of meat, which would be violent or stewed. There was a lot of people, in fact, a funny thing, and people laugh at this, because there was, a, there was a book written there some time ago about Angela's ashes. And the man in Angela Zassa wrote the book and he was saying that they had a sheep's head for dinner. You know what a sheep's yeah, head is? Yeah. And that was what they had for the dinner. But I remember selling sheep's head to people that were doing that. And in, in Limerick now this book was written, but they all castigated it. He was an outcast in Limerick because he, he didn't, they didn't want people to know that, yeah. that they would have sheep's head for yeah. dinner. But there was a lot of cheaper parts of, of meat and even things like uh, a, a beef heart. You know what a beef heart is? Yeah. Did you ever see one? Don't see what I mean? We used to sell them, and we used to sell them every week, and it's about that size. And just put stuffing into it, bread stuffing, packing them with stuff, mm -hmm. and roast it. And we used to have one ourselves every week. We used to love the, the stuffing and the beef heart. It's all lean meat. And that was one of the things. And another thing then we'd say that the people used to have would be things like kidneys and liver and sweetbreads. There's no go for those now. I mean, people don't even know what a sweetbread is. They don't know what a kidney is. Did you ever see a kidney? No. See what I mean? They, they, were all the, they were the standard meats in those days. They were people used to eat. It was only the rich people used by a roast. And uh, there was other bits and pieces as well, like things that 
Tripe was another thing that was very popular. You know what tripe is? I've heard of it. See, but, but yeah. yeah but that, that was actually, I suppose I'm mean, being a bit vulgar now, but it was the cow's belly. Yeah. And uh, now it was cleaned white. It used to be cleaned with lime and boiled. And that was a kind of a popular meal, you know. But there was lots of things in those days that people were, they're talking about horse meat now and, in, and burgers <laughs> yeah. and people are turning up their noses at it like, you know. But in those days people were eating those meats, you know, and, yeah. uh, and uh, they thought it was fine, yeah. you know. If you buy the sheep's head, you would three different dinners out of it. The main dinner would be, the first thing you'd have is the soup. The, the soup that the sheep's head would make was all really good soup because the sheep's head is all bone. Most of it is bone. And the other thing then, they would say there'd be the good, the good slices of meat off the sheep's head. And then when they be finished, the sheep's head would break up into pieces and the children would be given the bits of bone to suck the meat off the bone. Yeah. So, you know, so uh, anyway, maybe that's boring now. I don't know whether, whether you think that, you know, but there's information, yeah, yeah. there's nothing oh, no. else, you know, yeah. One that was furthest back in mind was an archdeacon Nolan. I don't remember where he came from. He was the parish priest when I was very young. And then there was a Father Ryan who was very much into the Irish language. Uh, he used to say Mass in Irish. And uh, then there would come a little later, you had Father Hammersley and Father Hayes and Father... Who else is there? But the other ones I remember. Father Hayes would be a popular one because he was, he was a very community man. And would we be... When we'd be starting the football team in Bank Place or in Gold Slane, we'd want the football. So we'd go round the town and knock on the doors and collect pennies from people in the houses to save up for the football. And you know the first man we used to go to? Hayes. Father Hayes. Oh, Hayes, yeah. So he used to give he was the first man that used to give us the money to spare to get enough money to buy a football. Doesn't that sound funny? Mm -hmm. yeah. And can I ask you, is Father Hayes Canon Hayes? He is, yeah. But he was—he started off being a Father Hayes. Father Hayes, yeah, yeah. And then he was, um, he, he was, I forget where he, I think he was away for, I think he was in England first, I'm not certain yes. that now. Yeah. But then he came as a cure to Tipperary Town. Uh, you know what a cure is? Yeah. The younger priest. priest. And he was there for a long while. And then he came, and then he went out to Bancha as a parish priest. Yeah. And then he was appointed a canon, and he was out there. That's one thing I remember about him. And um, the other thing he used to say, you'll never, you'll never really have peace until you've had a war. Peace doesn't mean anything until you know what a war is. Yeah. And go well, back again, I keep forgetting to tell you this, but the people that used to come in to me as, as uh, customers, yeah. they had no money. But they were a very content kind of people. I'm not saying happy now, because you, yeah. you, to, I don't know what to do, something special you have to be happy. Yeah. But these people, they were very, they, they felt good. They were great neighbours. They never let anyone down. Everyone was meeting everybody. They were going into all each other's houses, you know. If someone was sick like, the next door person would be minding them, you know. Yeah. And nowadays, everyone just complains. They're complaining about money, they're complaining about the government, they're complaining about Everything. Yeah. You you know that yourself, don't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know anyone that's not complaining? No. <laughs> see what I mean, you know, and, and it's a pity that they, but in those days they used to complain and they had nothing. Uh, nowadays people have everything. And the more people have the more they complain. Yeah. I was knocked down by a motor girl uh, when I was four years of age. And the motor cars were very old in those days, real old fashioned motor girl. And there was a mud guard. You know what a mud guard is? Yeah. There was a bear across the front of the car, but it was out from the car. There was two iron bears going out, and the mud guard went across the front. And uh, the car was coming up along Bank Place, and I ran across the road, and the car hit me, and I fell onto the bumper. And the, the woman that was driving the car was a beginner. She wasn't good at car. So she was up as far as Blind Street before she pulled up. So she put up there anyway, and the next thing anyway, all I can remember is people, I was four years of age. Do you know what age that is? Four years. Yeah. Half your age. Yeah. And I, I fell onto the car, and I remember, all I can remember is the crowds coming around me, and bringing me back to my, down to my own house, and putting me up on the kitchen table. 
and there was nothing wrong with me. <laughs> not a thing wrong with me. Come back another day now and I'll give you the next the next portion of it. The next yeah. thing you're doing when you're a bit bigger. Yeah. You know, when you're when you're practicing for the the RTE or for <laughs> the Hollywood or some of those places. You can come over and meet me then. Yep, yeah, thanks. Thank you, you're welcome. You're very welcome. Very welcome.